Welcome to Applause Performances. I'm Idea Stream's Dan Paletta. Bringing the warm, welcoming sounds of his home in Benin, West Africa, guitarist and vocalist Lionel Lueke has been a reliable sideman for folks like Kirby Hancock, Santana, and Nora Jones. However, time he's stepping into the solo spotlight in the snowy Cleveland Heights as he brightens an otherwise dreary day here with his incredible fretwork and African melodies. We're lucky to welcome Lionel to our KeyBank studio for this February edition of Applause Performances. He plays tonight at Nighttown starting at 8. We invite you, if you're joining us now live, to go into our comment section and let us know where you are, where you're joining us from, and share any comments or questions you might have for Lionel. And if you could be so kind, make sure and share this live feed with your friends and family so everyone can check this out. I'm happy to welcome Lionel Lueke to our Idea Stream studios here in Cleveland's Playhouse Square District. Lionel, thanks for making the effort. A little snowy today, but you made it. Yeah, I made it. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Let's get started with a piece of music. What will you play for us first? Uh, I'm going to play a song called Novion. And Novion is my middle name, and it means uh, it's good to have a brother or a sister. So it's a song to be brothers and sisters. Right. <laughs> Messiame mi wo no via o a gbe didi lo me se un bio na wa A messiame mi wo no via o a gbe didi lo me se un bio na wa Ayo wa ya e ku wa ko Ayo wa ya e ku wa ko Ayo wa ya e ku wa ko Thank you. 
Leonel Lewecki live in our KeyBank studio for applause performances. If you're watching the stream live, let us know where you are. If you have any questions or comments, feel free, chime in. Hope you enjoyed that first piece Leonel played. Make sure you share the stream with your friends and family. Leonel, let's talk a little about where you grew up, Benin, West Africa. Was it a very musical place? Absolutely. A lot of music. Um, when I was kids, I used to play, uh, with, you know, in the playground with other kids, just messing around with our mother's yeah. bands and uh, we call it casserole, you know, percussions, and we just play. So, uh, yeah, I grew, definitely grew up in a musical environment. We had a chance to talk to Dr. Mark Lomax, who's a drummer. He's written this extended suite about uh, the first slaves arriving in Africa. But what he talked about was the functional nature of music in Africa, that it, it tends to accompany something a lot, like a, a birth or a death, or as opposed to going to sit down to a concert. Was that the kind of thing you grew up with? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Everything is followed with music, birth, like you said, death, um, any anniversary, there's always music around, yeah. You got your start singing and playing percussion. The guitar didn't come along until you were 17, so how did you end up with one? Well, my older, bro my older brother was a guitar player, and um, it took me a while to try his guitar because I was so scared that you know, he would catch me playing his guitar and he would be mad, but actually he wasn't. He, he was my first teacher, my first influence, actually, yeah. Jazz, one of the great things about jazz is it's really open to absorbing other music. It could be music from Middle East, it could be African music, it could be Afro-Cuban. You come from this great culture, the kora, the kalimba, these beautiful instruments. Did you, do you find yourself drawing on those when you play jazz? Absolutely, it's just, it's. It's almost like uh, like when I'm talking, you know, there's a, an accent behind. It's a, it comes through whatever I do. Um, either I'm playing swing, I'm, I'm playing more modern jazz. Uh, that accent is always there. Yeah, it's part of my, my language, you know. You have a very percussive style of playing the guitar. Do you see it as, ever as a percussion instrument? You don't, we don't think of it that way. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I use it, as you heard, you know, f for different reasons, but definitely my, my playing is very percussive. And I think it comes from my background, like I was saying, when I was kids, I used to play a lot of percussion, yeah. So you used to play steel strings and, and sometimes even bicycle brake cables. How did that all work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, um, uh, when you don't have, uh, I remember back back in the day, back in the day in Benin, in Cotonou, where I grew up, there were no places to buy guitar strings, so you have to think. You know, when you broke a string, uh, what you, what are the other solution right there? So I thought about bicycle brake cable, but I have to take it apart and use just the one in the middle. Ah. And that one I use it for different or the first string E or B or G strings. And it kind of it works. And the normal guitar strings, I just boiled them. Really? Yeah. In water? In, in hot water. Bring them back to life for a few days. <laughs> 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 or I put them in vi in, a, uh, in vinegar for like 24 hours. So, you know, uh, there's a phrase. I don't know if um, uh, necessity is the, the mother, mother of invention. There we go. There we go. Well, that's neat. That's neat. You got to make it happen. You got to make it happen. <laughs> you got to find the solution. Yeah. Let's hear another piece. What would you like to play for us next? All right. Uh, next one, I'm going to play um, um, a song called Benny's Tune. Benny's Tune.
Beautiful guitar and vocal work from Lionel Luecki. He joins us today for applause performances. We're inviting you to share any comments or questions you might have during this live feed. You can catch Lionel tonight at Nighttown. I'm Idea Stream Stan Paletta. Lots of folks checking in. Constant checks in from Ghana. And uh -oh. says, God bless <laughs> Lionel Luecki. Also uh, heard from uh, Tommy, who says he saw you with Raul in Florida last year. Raul Midan, I guess. That's right. Yeah. We're we on the road, actually. I want to see Raul tomorrow. Yeah. Moreno says, cool. Kenji says, great, my friend. Ricardo said, this guy, this guy is amazing, great musician. Lionel is a gift for us all. And uh, Tony has a question. He wants to know how technology and social media are helping the world hear more about African artists. I think big time because I can, um, I can tell last time, I mean, two weeks ago or two, three weeks ago, I was in Benin. And I can tell that uh, um, musicians in general, are uh, getting better because they, they know what's going on in the rest of the world through through social media. I mean, back in the day, we didn't have that opportunity. So uh, I think it's a, it's a positive thing. Um, and the, even beside music, just to get any information out there uh, from Africa to here or from here to Africa is always a good thing, yeah. I mean, the very notion 20 years ago of us having someone tune in from Ghana exactly. to watch a performance, exactly. would be, we wouldn't even, th wouldn't even consider that It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about your entrance into jazz. What did you think of it when you first heard it? Well, first I heard, I heard jazz. I just freak out. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I didn't know what it was. I, I, I was so attract, attractive to, to what I was hearing, but I, haven't, I had no idea what it was. Uh, it was just different than what I used to, you know. What I used to was just play African music, um, and I decided to to investigate, you know. To uh, I went to the library, uh, the French library um, in Cotonou, um, start trying to find cassettes, uh, George Benson, Wes Montgomery, you know, all the guitar players, uh, Tal Falo. Uh, um, and even the you know the raw guys, um, Jimi Hendrix, BB sure. King. All. So I started transcribing by ears, just through my cassette player and, and uh, my cassette. And I was putting half uh, dead batteries to slow down. Oh, good idea! So I could at least get the note, even if the pitch was all over the places. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's how I get in. I just learn by years and um, later on go to school to un more understand what's, what's going on. I think we take it for granted when we grow up in the West. You know, we learn the, the, the solfege scale, do, re, mi. We know that, but that's not often part of other people's cultures. Was it hard to absorb all of that, to, to get a feel for that? It was, no, actually, it was, for me, it was easier because I, I, I did the hardest part before I get into that. Meaning, you know, music is all about ears, so I kind of developed my ears earlier. But I knew that I was kind of limited, so I wanted to go to music school to understand better harmonically what was going on, you know. And that's what I did. And and um, I remember, I mean, when I was in Paris, my teachers and even my, my peers were telling me, man, you have a different way of playing this. And I was telling them, no, I want to play like you guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I came here, you know. So um, it took me a while to understand, to to point, to get exactly, to understand what they were talking about. And what they were talking about was, you know, my technique, where I mute the string. And, and those are, um, I guess, natural things that I get from Africa, playing percussion or playing different African instruments, you know. You talk about studying, you were studying in Paris, you went to the Berkeley College of Music, then you went to Thelonious Monk Institute in Los Angeles. As you moved along, how did that journey help you grow, do you think? Big time, actually it helped me um, find my own voice, you know, and, and just um, 
uh, keep. Uh, I mean, I, I try not to focus too much on on my own voice because I want to learn. But um, the journey kind of helped me to really okay. This is this is me. Uh, this is what I do the best. Let me leave this on the side and work on things I don't do so well. You know, is mastering the instrument does that have to come before you find your own voice? No, 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 not absolutely. Okay. But I guess it depends on people. Some people had their own voice from the beginning, right on, you know. And I think I, I do, I did have my own voice. I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> I had to find it. <laughs> <laughs> so at the Monk Institute, you study with Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, Terrence Blanchard, which is sounds like a pretty good band just to, <laughs> to yeah, play with. Ma- amazing. amazing. Um, you've, you've played with them. You've recorded with them. How did they? How did those guys mentor you in any way? Wow. I mean, those are my heroes. You know. Um, I played with Terence for many, many years, and then I've been playing with Herbie for 13, 14 years now. And, and uh, he, every time it feels like it was yesterday, yeah. <laughs> you know, because he's one of those uh, musicians that bring the best out of you and, and challenge you at the same time. So, And I love that, you know, there's no comfort zone with Herbie, and I learned that from him <laughs> as well. So. I like to just throw myself out there and see what I get. And I, th- and I think that's the best way to learn. And that's what I learned from from those guys. Yeah. It's going to be a little scary, though, sometimes to walk the tightrope and, like, am I going to fall off? <laughs> Absolutely. It's like working, walking in the dark and, you know, you, you might hit your head against the wall. But, hey, <laughs> if you don't try, you don't get anything. That's the, that's my vision of, of art, you know. We'd love to hear another piece. What will you play for us next? Yes. Um, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to play... Uh, a song called Vien from my latest CD. Uh, CD is called The Journey, and Vien uh, means my child. It's a song I wrote for a kid who lost his mother in a war. So this is a song for peace and love. Je viens au I Thank you. 
Beautiful music from Lionel Luecki, who joins us today for applause performances on 90.3 WCPN's Facebook page. I'm Idea Stream's Dan Paletta. Any questions or comments for Lionel, please pass them along. We'll share them in just a moment. You can catch Lionel tonight at 8 at Nighttown in Cleveland Heights. That was beautiful. Thank you. Uh, it's, you. It's a sad piece. It's a piece about a child who lost a parent. Do you write a lot of things like that? I mean, do you watch TV and think to yourself, I've got to or, or read a story in the news and think, i got to write something about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I see a... Uh, a sheep falling in, in the ocean from Africa, you know, I just, I remember I was in one of the hotel room and watching the news and I, and right after I just grabbed my guitar and just, and this is what, what came out. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there are joyful situations you write about too. Absolutely. I write, I write for any situation. I write for, you know, the, the life we're living every day, basically. So Sanchez sends you lots of emojis. A thank you and a lots of hands clapping. Alex's great thank performance. You. Jamie's is beautiful. Lots of other folks checking in too. So it's nice to hear from you. And again, if you came in a little late here, you can, we're going to archive this whole performance on Facebook a little bit later today. We're talking about you working with Herbie Hancock and working with Terrence Blanchard. They were the leaders of the band. You're doing a lot more of being out front. Do you, is there an extra challenge there, being the front man? Yes, because you, like right now, I'm, I'm on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, th I, I think the challenge is, um, it's not really, for me, it's not about the music. I mean, it's music's part of it, but the challenge is, you know, just be on the road road or on your own or with your band and 
you know, you have to make decision when a flight get cancer, <laughs> uh, things like that. But you know, if you when I, I, I if I'm with uh, Herbie or Chick or Ria, I don't know, I don't have to deal with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you know. Yeah, we we have don't, to. I don't think we ever think of the extra musical parts of it. We just think, well, you know, Lionel's got to go play at night down tonight, but we don't think about you had to get here and oh, now yeah, you're yeah. sleep. And exactly. You yeah. know, I play last night, slept for four hours, get here, yeah, play sure. tonight, tomorrow go to Toronto. So that's, that's um, I guess that's a hard part, but mu- playing is the best part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest part. <laughs> and kind of wait all day. <laughs> <laughs> You made a recording recently with the wonderful pianist Kevin Hayes called Hope. You really collaborate with a lot of different people. Yeah. What do you take from each of those times? I mean, do you think to yourself, I'm going to do something with Kevin Hayes and that's going to be different than what I'm going to do with Herbie? Or Yeah, well, yeah, it's going to be different. I love collaboration because I, I always feel like I, I, I always learn from collaborating with different musicians. Um, the one thing that is always there is is the way I play. That's not going to change. But... Um, I like the, that challenge to 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 play with uh, the other musician and try to uh, connect with that musician at the highest level. So yeah, the, I love collaboration like I did with Kevin or um, Mr. Dave Holland, you know, the group Aziza with uh, Chris Porter and Eric Holland. Uh, different collaboration. Um, um, chance to play with Chico Ria and Steve Gadd on on the album or two with them. All those. Com- Collaboration, um, uh, learning process for me. Absolutely. Alex checks in from Johnson City, and another Alex has a question: What's your writing process like? Do you force yourself to write every day? He wonders, or, or do you do it when you have time? Do you devote a certain time for composition every day? No, I don't. I don't write every day. Unfortunately, I wish I uh, I could. But what I do is um, when I get inspired, and the inspiration can come at any time. Lately. It's been on the airplane. <laughs> don't ask me why. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, I don't want to di- disturb my neighbors. So usually what I go, I go to the bathroom with my phone and record, oh you know, gosh. me singing a ba- bass line or a melody. And, and uh, you know, when I go t- on in my phone, I have a bunch of scratch of melodies and ideas. So what I do is um, when I have time, if I have a day off somewhere, I might go through the list and listen back. Oh, Okay, maybe I'm in a mood of developing this little piece um, and uh, make it uh, a song. Um, that's that's what I do. That's my process. Well, would you share one more song with us before you go? Yes. Um, still from uh, the latest city, The Journey. This one is called Dark Lightning.
<laughs> Man, that was something else. Was crazy. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Dan. Leonardo Thank Lecky you. joining us for applause performances. He's at night town tonight at eight o'clock in Cleveland Heights. Sunday checks in. Evel says that's funky, beautiful. Uh, Jehoshaphat Hashante. Max is sorry he's going to miss you in Toronto. Max, if you leave now, uh. you'll be here in time for Cleveland. <laughs> That was terrific. Thanks so much for coming to share Thank music you, and your story, man. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Lionel Weke, tonight at Nighttown at 8, he joined us today for applause performances on our Facebook page. Thanks to Idea Streams, Al Dalhausen, Joe Sheppa, Tina Kutzab, Charles Calhoun, Mike Palabayas, Roger Lumpkin, Tim DeBrevitz, and Mike Vendelin. Applause performances is produced by Dave DiOrio. Kerry Wise is Idea Streams' managing producer of arts and culture. I'm Idea Streams' Dan Paletta. Make sure you join us for the next applause performances. That's Monday, March 16th at noon, when we welcome vocalist Kat Edmondson. Thanks a lot for joining us.